Right, here we go. Welcome to the latest Democracy 4 developer blog video. I am Cliff. I'm the coder and designer on the game. Um, quite a lot to talk about. This is just before we go into early access. I uh, can't remember what uh, video number it is. Um, so yeah, I think we got back 10 days until um, it comes out. We've got the 6th of October. So um, yeah, that's pretty frightening. Um, to be honest, look, it, sh it shouldn't be really. I mean, like we're going to be uh, then in early access on Steam. You can currently buy the game now from us, um, direct from our website using the itch uh, widget thing, and you'll get a Steam key when it comes out. Um, that's something I should mention actually. The minute it's out on Steam, I then request Steam keys for people who already have the game, and uh, then it takes about a day to get them. So if you've already got the game and um, you don't have to email me saying can I have my Steam key please um, it will show up in like your itch account or your humble account whichever um, the minute the minute we get them so yeah not long until release which is very 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 scary I'm in dark mode by the way if you're wondering what's going on there and it doesn't normally look like that it's because I was testing something um, we're probably gonna have one more update uh, before we go into early access I think that 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 would be that version number which is 1.12 um, and hopefully that will include Canada as a new country so at the moment we have uh, United States UK Germany France hopefully we'll have Canada I'll have to move that along one um, with any luck so um, you know that should be coming France is in since the last time I spoke Behold the excitement of France with its uh, equality and baguettes. Um, none of these countries are final, I should point out. Uh, let's just start a game in France, actually. Um, France was quite an interesting country to, to do, actually, um, because it's it's a fairly socialist country. I mean, that's that you know that that's not a surprise to anyone. If we look at the, um, the compass, it's over here. We haven't been over here yet um, with the other countries, I don't think. Um, but it was quite interesting because there's a lot of social programs um, and there's not as much tax as you'd think and it was actually quite hard to get the numbers to line up so they don't quite line up so the, the level of deficit and debt and GDP is, is not what it actually is right now um, in, in France so you know it's not that far off I mean what's interesting is that France does start off with a corporate exodus um, and you know you can argue all day long whether or not France is currently undergoing that, um, and uh, and strikes. There's a <laughs> there's a rail strike, and um, a doctor strike at the same time. I mean, arguably, yeah. I mean, Fr France does. Uh, the French people do go on strike more than other people. Um, I remember looking it up, uh, thinking is this just a cliche? But no, it's true. They have very strong um, trade unions. Interestingly, their trade union membership is actually quite low, and we we couldn't manage to reproduce their trade union power w with a low membership. So the trade union membership is actually a, a little bit higher than than it is in France. I mean, quite noticeably higher actually. Um, but the important thing is not to get the individual numbers right, but to hopefully convey the the situation of France and the um, the kind of like challenges from a political point of view um, in France. So hopefully we kind of do that. I mean, like none of this is hard coded, right? But but it comes out with egalitarian society, which is a big deal to French people. Um, I'm gonna should I switch it off dark mode? I don't know. Leave it on dark mode for the time being. Um, so it's a very different country to play. I think it's the hardest one um, to play because you're very close to um, to major debt problems. So there, there is a deficit and there is a, a lot of debt. So you can get into debt problems really quickly if you don't um, find some way out of it. There's loads of ways out of it. It's not just like um, you know austerity. You can um, you can invest in things and and uh, you can take various measures. I'm not going to go into big rant about how to play the game um, but hopefully France feels a bit like France um, we don't have French specific stuff in yet but I would love to know uh, what is specific to France that we don't have in there they have a little bit of a sort of carbon tax very low level but they do have one um, which is quite interesting very big on nuclear power famously um, invested into nuclear power um, so that's the thing um, and obviously a lot of state stuff 
whenever you put something in this game, like sort of saying, we have a state telecoms company, people who live in the country will always pipe up and say, well, well, actually, technically it's not. And it's the same with the UK. Like, um, I think Network Rail is a, a, a like, a, a public company limited by guarantee or something there's some sort of like legal nonsense that makes it so we don't have to admit we've nationalized it um, and that happens a lot in countries that you'll have a law or um, uh, state ownership or um, you'll or some sort of regulation that is effectively a ban but technically isn't uh, but it's worded to avoid admitting things um, so we don't hide behind any of that we just sort of think does it look like it's owned by the state in practice yes okay it's it's stay owned um, anyway nothing's gonna be gonna be perfect nothing in the game is final by the way so if you play France you go this doesn't feel like France or the same with Germany or or when we put it in Canada um, one of the reasons we want to be in early access is we want loads of people from all around the world to play the game and go actually I'm Canadian and blah blah this is not legal in Canada or, or you haven't implemented this um, and also we want people to go look do you know that the one of the big uh, political controversies in Canada is X or in France is Y like we can Google stuff right we can read stuff and I've, I've been to every country we plan no I've never been to Spain we're gonna put Spain in I've never been to Spain uh, I've been to all the others um, so we're not like clueless about it but um, nothing is as good as people who actually live somewhere um, talking about what it you know what it's really like um, so um, we're open to, to getting load, loads of feedback on stuff so um, what have I been doing apart from um, Ginny researching France and just putting that in um, I've been putting in the, like like the steam stuff hopefully if I do that yeah um, you can see hide I don't want to show everyone my steam friends <laughs> I have to black that out be controversial it wouldn't be controversial I mean like it's just friends um, I don't really have steam friends um, that I, I don't really uh, do the steam community kind of stuff anyway um, yeah, Steam integration is in that you can see your achievements and stuff like that, blah, 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 blah. Um, we have achievements in the game anyway that are kind of like our thing that we put in. Here's our Steam achievement screen. Um, for anyone who's really confused and freaked out by this and going, I prefer the, the old game that looked different. Um, yeah, here it is in, in light mode. Okay, and we're going to have, we're gonna have colorblind mode as well. Um, so we have our own achievement system. And it basically just tells Steam this achievement has has been done, and then it will show up in your, um, you know, in this thing here. Um, so the integration with Steam is kind of like mostly done. Um, th there's a few tiny little things that are not done yet. If I go to the main menu, I'll show you what I mean. Um, well, actually, let me just. Where is it? Where would it be? Where would it be? I think it would be public services. Oh, I haven't done the translation. I haven't done the translation. Um, okay, mod support is, is basically gone in. This is what I want to talk about. So we go to the main menu and we go to mods. Uh, this is very similar to Democracy 3, although I had to recode a lot of it because um, Steam has changed. Uh, the uh, Steam Workshop stuff has changed. So um, currently I've done like a little test mod, which is Rural Internet Subsidies, authored by me. Um, and this shows you the mods that are actually in the game and this horrible bright green color that I must fix shows that it's active um, I can disable it and enable it without uninstalling it so you can leave all the files on the disk if you sort of hate this mod or think I don't want this mod for this game then you can like disable it um, if you're running the game and, and this is always here regardless of where you bought the game um, whether or not Steam is running or whatever so um, we have support for, for for modding of, of almost everything um, this is where you can like visit the steam workshop I think I just launches the thing that should actually load the steam workshop at the moment there's only one thing in there rural internet subsidies done by me how do I close that <laughs> I don't use it a lot um, and then we got a screen where you can create a mod so you type in your name your title your description and then you browse to um, a particular folder on the disk um, which will be where all the subfolders that contain your mods that you've created are in and you would select that and then you would select an image which would be in the parent folder um, we're going to do a guide for all this you would select that and then you would submit to workshop when all that's uh, filled out and then if you want to update it um, the game knows because it asks steam what mods has this um, 
what like Steam Workshop stuff has this user submitted in the past. You have to retype in the author and these two. Um, just you just do. Don't ask. Um, and then you can submit an update. So if you update the game and fix something, then you need to do that. Um, hopefully it's it's going to be really simple. And the thing about modding this game is you don't need any special tools. You don't need to know how to code or anything like that. Um, it's basically just something that you need, like a spreadsheet or a text editor, something like Excel or, or TextPad or something like that. Um, and we're going to do loads of tutorials on it. I'm going to do a bit of that tomorrow. Um, it's going to be really easy to do. Democracy 3 had a, a crazy number of mods. M some of them might work. Um, a lot of them will probably need a little bit of tweaking, but like most of the work is done. Uh, and I'm going to also tell you how to make these icons because they're not bitmaps. Um, these are vector graphics icons made in Inkscape, um, but they're quite easy to do. And if you want to do something that's not radically new, you can do it by combining elements that already exist in the game. So it should be quite easy. Something that has changed, um, I'm going to shut up in a minute, uh, but something that has changed is um, the way healthcare demand works. So I need to think about it. Yeah, healthcare demand. So there used to be a bunch of things that affected the cost of state healthcare or healthcare vouchers or healthcare tax credits. Um, and they now don't. What they do is they now fuel healthcare demand and healthcare demand affects the state health service cost. And um, we did that to make it a little bit more obvious and so that there's, there's no gaps, but you will notice maybe a change there. Um, so if you go into the cost of something like the state health service, um, you will see healthcare demand. The environment, I don't know, it shouldn't really be there really, I think, I don't know. Um, so, so this is a thing that is affected by by loads of inputs, especially if you have like like really bad things going on. If you have drug addiction and stuff like that, that's going to cause problems here. Push up healthcare demand. Um, something that's interesting to think about, actually politically, is that technology pushes up healthcare demand. So if you come up with a new cure for something, there's more demand because normally you just die, right? And no, not suddenly technology has enabled a cure for this thing. That's brilliant and and hurrah for technology. But actually, it also means there's more demand on uh, the healthcare system because we can cure more stuff. Um, which is interesting because like, if you push up technology, you think there's no downside. Um, uh, but there is. That tourism effect is a bit high, actually. And why have I got two violent crime inputs? You always spot the bugs when it's live. Anyway, I would like to ask anyone who knows they're going to buy the game um, on Steam when it comes out very soon. Um, to add it to your wish list anyway, even if you know you're not going to forget, add it to your wish list. It's good. It puts us up charts on Steam and then more people see the game and hear about the game. Um, and it makes a big difference um, if you can do that. It's, it's, it's much appreciated. I kind of don't like the, the thing where indie devs spend half their time thanking their Patreons and like sort of begging for likes and everything because it, it comes across as a bit sleazy and a bit kind of pathetic. But um, please like and subscribe. Um, I don't know. I mean, like, I guess it's part of the job. I don't know. I would like to thank everyone who has bought the game so far before it was even in early access because um, you had no idea what you were getting. Um, you had no idea how many bugs would be in it or, or like, um, what would be done yet. And you didn't know if we were going to change it in a way that you didn't like. And it shows a lot of faith. Um, in um in me as a developer and i do i do appreciate it because it it vastly reduces my stress levels this is the most expensive game we've ever made um and uh, it's taken the longest time uh so there's a lot of the, there's a lot of risk um indie game development is incredibly risky and i really appreciate it when people you know take their hard-earned money and um and buy a game from us thank you very much i've done exactly what i said i hate it when i hear people doing <laughs> You never know. I may do a video um, the Sunday beforehand, um, depending, but I'll probably be super busy with testing and, and doing Canada and stuff like that. So the game is coming out soon. Uh, anyone saying, is the game coming out on other stores, Cliff? Um, probably. Um, I can't say who and where yet until I have final agreement on everything. Um, but um, if you uh, read the blog, follow me on Twitter or check the forums, uh, check the Positech forums, um, obviously, um, then uh, if there is any announcement about stuff like that, I will let you know. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please wishlist, wishlist.
and see you soon.